Good evening. Last week I put a film on YouTube uh, about Extinction Rebellion and uh, I called them wastrels and uh, I'm not going back on that, they are wastrels. Most of them are hypocrites as well. And I'll put a link to the film up there somewhere in the corner if I can. And it was quite interesting because that film on YouTube, the whole film, has had around about 50 views, which for my films is pretty good. Uh, but the little clip I put on Twitter has had over 9,000 views and a lot of people have commented on it both positively and negatively and a lot of the people that made negative comments I said to them you clearly haven't seen the whole film and clearly they hadn't um, but a couple of people did justifiably ask me um, what I was doing to save the planet to use the term that they are also keen on and could I justify uh, what I said in the film, which is that I plan and I believe that I'm going to leave the little bit of the earth that I'm responsible for in a better condition when I die than it was, was in when I was born. And I stand by that. But I'll just touch on a few of the things about my lifestyle, my particular lifestyle, and why I feel confident in uh, making the claims that I've made. Um, firstly, in terms of energy use, um, in this house we have solar panels and a battery set and what happens is any excess power generated by the solar system puts, goes into the battery set which is then used in the evenings for the lighting and the freezers and the fridge and what have you. Uh, we have no gas here, we have no mains gas, we have no mains drainage, we have no mains water which sometimes causes an issue. We do have oil fired central heating which is rarely used. And the reason it's rarely used is because we have wood burners in the house. And uh, I'm sitting here sweltering in front of the wood burner tonight um, because it's cold outside. It's not cold in here, it's lovely and warm in here because we've got three foot thick walls and the place stays warm. Um, so in terms of energy use, we actually generate more electricity than we use each year. And the reason I know that is because we have a generation meter and a consumer meter and we are very strict about monitoring our energy use. And part of the reason that we, there's two, there's two factors in us generating more energy than we use. The first is that we've got a very good solar system, which generates a lot of power in itself. And the second reason is that we've driven down our electricity usage over the years here. So we have all low energy light bulbs and that kind of thing. Uh, and we're very careful about appliances and you know the, the the way we do things so for example we don't have an electric kettle in this house uh, our water is kept warm in a, in a heater that uses far less energy than an electric kettle would <laughs> so that's energy um, we don't make unnecessary journeys here uh, I drive a petrol car that is 12 years old I think um, I've never ever owned a new car myself um, I, I did have newish cars company cars when I when I had proper jobs <laughs> but but those days are long gone uh, I only ever buy second-hand cars um, so you know in terms of environmentalism yes you can argue that very modern new cars can be more fuel efficient but how much energy is used in actually building those cars so on principle I do not buy a new car let's talk about food because that's one of the hot topics I don't eat fast food as a general rule of thumb, I have the occasional Indian takeaway when I've been very well behaved and Mrs. Rat thinks I need to be spoiled. Um, but I've never set foot in a McDonald's, a KFC, a Burger King, a Pizza Hut, a Pizza Express. I don't know what they're all called. I've never been any, in any of them. Never in my life have I set foot in a McDonald's. And uh, long may that continue. I don't need to go into these places and buy this crap. Uh, I do have a very soft very big soft spot for genuine Indian cuisine uh, because I'm a bit of a curry head and I like my spicy food. Um, so that is an occasional treat. But when I say an occasional treat, I'm talking about twice a year, perhaps, I have an Indian takeaway. And probably the same for Chinese takeaway. And it's normally because somebody else wants it and not me. Uh, I'm happy to buy into that. But I'm not one of those people that goes out and has takeaway three times a week. Um, I don't, I try not to use imported food. I have a food hierarchy when I'm shopping. So my first choice obviously is home produced food, be that meat, 
game, vegetables out of the garden. And that, that leads on then to storing that food and processing that food and, and how best to look after it. Um, and there are some very talented people out there that do that. If, I, if it's food that I can't grow myself uh, or you know, produce here, um, I'm looking for a local supplier all the time. I'm looking for local suppliers. Um, and I want to know, for example, with meat, I want to know where that animal came from, how it was reared, where it was slaughtered. Uh, because I don't want to drive food miles up. Um, tea. I don't drink coffee. Coffee's a. Uh, I, I, I don't like the stuff, but I know it's a very fashionable drink these days, and I don't seem to be able to go anywhere without seeing somebody with a takeaway coffee. I've never consumed a takeaway coffee. Uh, I, I, I just wouldn't do it. I used to drink a lot of tea. I used to drink 15, 16 cups of tea a day, uh, particularly when I worked in the office, um, and people used to creep by giving me a cup of tea every five minutes. That's by the by. I was a big tea addict. Um, I've cut that back. I own, only have now one cup of tea a day. Um, and that tea is not in a tea bag. I loathe tea bags. Tea bags contain plastic. They don't rot down properly. Um, and they put crap in them, to be perfectly blunt. They're an expensive, silly thing, tea bags. If you're still using tea bags, please, please stop. Go and buy yourself a tea strainer for 99p. Buy yourself some loose tea, you'll save money straight away, you'll enjoy the tea more and you won't be, you know, you, you won't be buying into this system of, of having everything as convenient as possible. Because, although it may seem convenient, it isn't actually, because you've still got a tea bag to get rid of. Um, in terms of, of meat and vegetables, as I say, I'm trying to avoid anything imported. So, um, if I can't find the food that I'm after locally, um, I then look for something that's British. And it's, you know, obviously there's some things that we don't produce in this country and I have to buy them from, you know, overseas. Rice, for example, uh, and lentils. Believe it or not, I eat lentils occasionally. Um, some of my vegan uh, followers may find that hard to believe, but I do eat lentils. Um, so, yeah, I look for the, for the, uh, the, the, the red tractor mark. And uh, I had a big argument with somebody, a vegan, last year about the red tractor mark because... They assumed that I bought Red Tractor stuff because it's of a higher welfare standard. Um, and I don't, that's not why I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it because it's got a Red Tractor on it. I know it's British. Automatically, it's going to be a, a higher welfare product than something that's coming from abroad. So, for example, I will not eat any Danish pork products because I despise, absolutely despise sow crates. I think pigs are the most wonderful, intelligent creatures. They taste pretty good as well, but they're the most wonderful and intelligent creatures. And I think that we've, as a as a, a society, we have treated pigs very badly. It has to be said, chickens as well. Um, and if you want to really want to save the planet, uh, giving up white meat would probably be a good start. Not that I'm condoning that, because I actually really like chicken and I actually really like pork products and particularly bacon. Um, so yes, when I'm looking at the red tractor, I am automatically assuming that it's come from Britain and it's been processed in Britain. That's not always the case though, is it? Um, because some processed foods will give the impression that they've been made in Britain, but they're quite often they've been made from foreign products. So if you're buying ready meals in Tesco's, for example, if you're buying a ready meal with chicken in it, there's a strong probability that chicken's come from Thailand. Now, do you think it's right to import low welfare chickens from Thailand? Because I'm buggered if I do, and I wouldn't do it. Went to the cinema. I've uh, just had a week away with Mrs. Rat. Um, we uh, we were up in Wiltshire, at our house in Wiltshire, and she managed to drag me into a cinema. I'm not a big cinema fan. Last time I went, my eardrums were assaulted by the noise, um, and I didn't particularly enjoy the film. In fact, I think we walked out after about 20 minutes. That film was The Horse Whisperer, which is absolutely dire. Uh, I was, only saw 20 minutes of it, never again. Um, Anyway, I got dragged to the cinema, and one of my only complaints about going to the cinema was the fact that halfway through the film I was freezing cold because they'd got air conditioning in there. I'm sure air conditioning's lovely in a building like that, providing it's used correctly. Um, and I know that it's lovely in cars. When you, you've got, If you've got a tin box in the sunshine, it's going to get very hot and air conditioning's very nice. Um, but the majority of workplaces, indoor workplaces these days, have got air conditioning. And they've usually got it turned down very low. And I would suggest that if anybody wants to save energy, one of the positive things they could do would be to uh, go and turn that aircon off for a few hours each day. 
it's going to save a lot of energy. Equally, in the winter months, you know, I, I visit people's houses each day and I see people wandering around in t-shirts. I'm in a t-shirt now because it's absolutely sweltering in here with the wood burner on. But I'm talking about townhouses now where they've got central heating working flat out and they're walking around in shorts and a t-shirt in December. That's not sensible, guys. That's not saving the planet. Uh, I don't have a passport, which could be a problem if there's an election and I need to provide ID. But I don't think it will be. I haven't had a passport for 20 years. And I haven't been abroad since 1997 when we had a week away in Fortaventura. And I didn't particularly enjoy it. And after it, I said, I'm not getting another passport and going abroad again. In my lifetime, I've been on an aeroplane three times. And that's twice too many. Um, so I don't fly anywhere. So you know, I'm pretty confident that my carbon footprint, because of that, is automatically lowered massively. I'm not a big follower of fashion. <laughs> Anybody who's met me knows that. I wear um, extremely unfashionable clothing. Uh, I don't automatically buy the cheapest clothes I can find. Um, but I understand there are people out there that go and buy new outfits every week. And will buy outfits and wear them once and throw them away. What's wrong with you people? Um, how much time and energy is being wasted in producing those clothes than you feel better about yourself for a couple of hours while you're out on the piss or whatever it is you're doing? I it makes no sense to me. I was actually brought up to believe that, this was purely for financial reasons, but I was brought up to believe that uh, fashion was something that was terrible and that uh, you shouldn't be a slave to fashion. And I've kind of stuck with that all through my life, partly because I'm mean, partly because I've always been out of step with the rest of society. Um, but yeah, I don't spend a lot of money on clothes, uh, but when I do buy clothes, I try and buy good quality clothes that are gonna last me a long time. Um, uh, laundry, you know, how many times have I visited people's houses and there's a tumble dryer? The hottest day of the year, the hottest day of the year this year, I went in somebody's house and there was a tumble dryer working full time in the middle of the day. And I looked around, they got a garden, and I just thought, what the hell is wrong with people? Tumble dryers wear out clothes, tumble dryers use massive amounts of energy. Tumble dryers are wrong. Uh, don't give me all this crap about, oh, if you've had children, you need to tumble dryer. It's bollocks, sorry. It is absolute rubbish. Nobody needs a tumble dryer. They are evil. Get rid of them. Um, one final thought on sugar. I buy British sugar. I'm proud to buy British sugar, made from British sugar beet. And I hope other people think about that when they're buying imported cane sugar, because we don't need to import cane sugar. Yes, we all consume probably too much sugar, um, but if you're going to buy sugar, for goodness sake, buy British sugar. Um, and finally, there are people out there that have got a much smaller carbon footprint than me, if you want to measure carbon footprints and talk about you know, vogue statements like that. There are people out there that are environmentally much more sound than me. Um, I'm sitting here sweltering in front of a fire that's burning wood that came out of a, a hedge that I restored. It was the waste wood out of a hedge that I restored. And I'm very proud of that. And I know that not everybody can do that. Um, but And there are people out there that are doing a lot more and a lot better than I am. And I'm always happy and pleased to hear from those people and to learn from them. And I've learned from a lot of people I know, not know on Twitter and, um, and actually on Facebook as well, although I'm not on Facebook anymore. Um, but yeah, you know, keep that information flow going, help, help each other out. But if you're not, if you're, if you're driving your kids to school in a car that's two years old and you're thinking about changing your car and you follow fashion and you eat out on takeaways twice a week, um, don't come and try and lecture me about being environmentally friendly because you're not. You're the people that are causing this problem. The people that are stopping public transport in London today on the basis that we as a society are destroying the planet are doing just that they're preventing people from using public transport and they're absolute hypocrites absolute hypocrites um and i know that uh dear, dear old uh, trooper snooks has had a bit of a a bit of interaction on twitter today with a woman who who bases herself in new york and in britain and she's questioning his environmental credentials world's going mad world is going mad um, so yeah, don't lecture me unless you're doing better than me.
And if you're doing better than me, bring it on. Tell me more. Tell me what I can do. Anyway, another little rant out of the way. Um, glad you enjoyed the film last week. Uh, those those 50 of you who've seen it, um, thanks very much. <laughs>